Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs, joined by Don Lipscomb once again. And we are going to be talking quickly about the differences between red PRP and amber PRP. So this is not truly a, a scientific distinction between the two. This is more of an industry relevant topic uh, because there's a lot of talk about um, the hematocrit levels in mm -hmm. PRP and that's what's going to affect whether it's red or this sort of amber color with, with very low hematocrit values. So first of all, Don, can you start off by talking about how hematocrit red blood cell levels could affect PRP? Sure. So um, what constitutes red PRP will tend to have a higher hematocrit level. Right. And that just means that there are more red blood cells, basically, okay. in this. And um, you're also going to end up probably with more white blood cells because if there are more red blood cells, then it means it hasn't separated out very well. Uh -huh. So when you were doing the PRP, um, the final extraction, you probably sucked up, you know, white blood cells, red right. blood cells. Right. And so this might affect you if, um, if you're injecting it, for instance, it might actually not be very good at all for injecting into a joint. Right. Because it could cause inflammation. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and just the joint cavity typically does not have blood flowing through it. Right. So um, also this could cause bruising um, mm -hmm. if you were to inject it into, uh, into the skin, for instance. Right. Um, so with amber- is, is that just because you're introducing red blood cells not in a vessel? I mean, why, why did... Um, yes and no. So basically, red blood cells aren't supposed to exist outside of um, the actual blood vessels. Right. So whenever you um, introduce red blood cells into the tissues, yeah. then they're going to um, react with the tissue, basically uh, give off oxygen, uh -huh. produce react, um, reactive oxygen species. Right. And this is going to cause inflammation, tissue damage. Right. So... Right. And th is that also related to this? Some people will mention they feel like a stinging sensation, mm -hmm. and that has been loosely tied to hematocrit. Like higher red blood cell counts will, will get a more sort of a stinging sensation. Is that the yeah, same thing? Yeah, that's exactly what that what's going on right there. Okay. It's just you're feeling you're feeling sort of that reactive oxygen species and the inflammation right. and um, the subsequent bruising. So with amber PRP, yeah. so typically this is what you would consider more of a pure PRP. Right. So you're gonna have fewer red blood cells, you're gonna have more platelets, maybe fewer white blood cells depending on um, your preparation right. method and depending on what ultimately you want the treatment for. Right, too. so because platelets do not change the color to red, right? So we no. could have a high platelet concentration in an amber PRP, mm -hmm. or as we see a lot of times, these amber PRPs will have very low platelet concentrations. Yeah, so that's that's just a product of the plasma. So the plasma has a lot of um, proteins in it, mm -hmm. and um, this the the actual plasma itself is kind of an amber color. Right. But we're going to get that red color that almost looks like blood, but it's kind of not quite yeah. dark enough. Now that's where it's going to have you know ten percent or above um, hematocrit levels. Right. So. Right. Yeah, and, and so I think an interesting topic to point out is one, amber PRP will never be what would be considered leukocyte-rich PRP. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're going to try to get the leukocytes in the PRP, it's going to be red, right? Yeah. Just to get that buffy coat layer, inevitably you're going to have to take us enough red blood cells to kind of change the color. Mm -hmm. um, so there's many applications, especially surgical applications, yeah, that's where true. you want that leukocyte-rich PRP and it's going to be red. Particularly if you want to create like a gels. Yeah, it, if you want to activate ex exactly. the PRP to create mm -hmm. a fibrin clot. Exactly. Yeah. So. And, um, and the other thing I think is worth mentioning is that just because PRP is amber, just because it's mm -hmm. pure PRP, doesn't mean it's high quality no. PRP. Like we, we've done mm -hmm. reviews on some of the commercial kits and, and what we've seen from the, the third party studies that have come out is these gel based separator kits that do produce very good looking amber, mm -hmm. sort of pure looking PRP. They actually uh, oftentimes will have less platelets in the final product than the patient's whole blood. Um, so that it, by definition, it'd actually be more like platelet-poor plasma. Well, I, I've also seen doing my own research that um, s sometimes companies will advertise as there being three different levels. So you have red PRP, you have amber, 
and then you have like this lightest amber Ooh. or something. Yeah, it's like and maple so syrup. yeah, Yay. so probably <laughs> probably like the really really light one is the gel separator, and then maybe you yeah. have like amber to red double spin and then you have yeah, just single spin absolutely. red which it, is kind of how i was seeing it broken up into yeah you know. <laughs> and again this is like industry stuff like mm -hmm. the, this ties so closely into the information that these medical device manufacturers are putting forward and and yeah. trying to influence the market one way or another um but i think the the main takeaway i've seen from all this is just because it's clear or super amber you know prp is no indication that it has a high level of platelets, no. which is really the most important thing in PRP is that we have platelet rich plasma. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that shows that is consistent testing that demonstrates, you know, the same kind of variables over right. and over, the same numbers. Yeah. So don't don't judge a PRP yeah. by its cover and no. yeah, make sure there's, <laughs> there's testing to back or it. Or by its color. Oh, I guess. even better. Thank you, Don. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it. And um, thanks again, Don. We'll, we'll be talking about some more PRP in just a minute, so stick around.